Hi, my name is Mike Wilhite. I'm a certified trapper education instructor from the state of Wisconsin. And I'm gonna explain about a dirt hole set here today. Uh, dirt hole sets probably catch uh, a large percentage of any animal you catch on land that's responsible for catching a large percentage anyway. You catch raccoons, fox, coyotes, skunks, possums, anything's attracted to a dirt hole. Uh, basically, when I'm looking for a, a dirt hole set, particularly if I'm trapping fox in Wisconsin, I'm looking for something that gets their attention. Uh, if I look out across the field and if something grabs my eye, it's going to grab the eye of the canine as well. Um, something that uh, will bring them to the set. Uh, here I've got uh, just a, a piece of field stone that was out in the middle of the grass. Um, foxes, coyotes um, will see that stone, uh, possibly be attracted to that. But when I make my set, I'm making a hole, I'm making a small hole underneath that goes underneath the rock. I like the hole two to three inches in diameter. You don't have to take a measuring stick. You don't have to measure it. It's not rocket science, but about two or three inches in diameter, six to eight inches deep or deeper if I can get it, uh, angling underneath that rock. Then I take and make a bed directly in front of that hole and I'm staking a trap. And in this case, I've got a double stake swivel where there's two rebar stakes that are cross staked and I stake them underneath my trap, right in the bed. That does a couple things. I have to make the bed a little bit deeper so we have uh, some drainage if it rains or something. And it also gets everything right in one spot so I'm not making a, not disturbing a big area. Um, the trap is placed in that bed and it's, it's in there good and firm. So when the animal steps on, if the animal steps on possibly the ears of that and in this, place, this case is a coil spring trap. If he steps on that or steps on the jaw, the trap itself will not shift. If that shifts, that'll get their attention and they'll shy away from the set. As well, I have a fiberglass pan cover overneath, oh, on top of the pan. It goes underneath the free jaw and on top of the pan and that keeps uh, the dirt or your covering material from getting underneath the pan uh, rendering the trap useless or non-functioning. The trap, again, this isn't rocket science. If I'm, if I'm uh, trapping fox, that's about, the, my trap pan is right about here, and that's about the distance I want it from the edge of the hole. You know, about five, six inches. Uh, for coyotes, maybe a little bit farther, maybe, you know, about six inches is, works pretty good for me in, you know, in about all situations, fox or coyote. The idea here is I'm going to put a little bait down in this hole. I'm going to drop it down in there as far as I can get it. And I might take a little grass plug and cover that up, cover that bait up so they can't see it. And they're going to be able to smell it. And I'm going to take a shot of urine and put it on the back, on this backing, maybe on this, on this back of the rock here. I might, uh, depending on the time of year, put a little gland lure on top. Um, personally, I don't like to have any uh, bait or urine smell right here on the trap or the trap bed. As it, a lot of times it'll trigger a rolling instinct in some animals and you wonder why the trap's out of the bed in the morning and it's over here, you know, stretched out as far as it can go and it's got long hairs in it. That's got, probably because the critter rolled in it. But the idea, the idea is to kind of block that off. They know there's bait in it, they can smell it, they can't quite see it. The longer you got them working at the set, the better your odds are of catching that animal. Red fox are gonna dance back and forth until they finally get caught. The coyotes, coyotes can be a little more finicky. They might come in, take one step, two, and they're out of there. Uh, but the idea is to keep them at the set, working it long, long enough to get caught. In some cases too, I like to put something in front of my set, in front of my hole, and maybe right behind it and that kind of creates what we call a little bit of a walkthrough where they actually step over that but they're not stepping far enough they're going to step right in the bed of that trap or right in the pan of that trap.